So initially I had some concerns as to whether or not this was actually a self-improvement topic, but after some deep thinking and profound pondering, I've realized that taking steps to get yourself out of low back pain is technically improving yourself. Now, if you're like me and you've experienced low back pain on and off for the last several years, then this video is just for you. Hi, for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Matty. I'm a male model, physiotherapist, and fitness enthusiast. And in this video, I will share with you how I fix my low back pain from the perspective of a qualified specialist musculoskeletal physiotherapist and as someone who has experienced low back pain. Just a quick disclaimer to say that if you experience pins and needles or numbness in both legs, numbness around the groin, sudden giving way of both legs, or if you have any significant changes in bladder or bowel function, then you need to go straight to A&E because it could be something quite serious known as cordial equina. And of course, always consult with a family physician or GP if you're not sure about anything because they are the true medical professionals here. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. There are different types of low back pain and each have different causes. The one we're gonna be focusing on today is non-specific low back pain. And it's usually to do with the musculature around the back. However, you can take the principles from this video to rehabilitate most different types of low back pain. For example, if you have any sort of nerve irritation or sciatic nerve irritation, or some people like to call it sciatica, which is where one of the discs in your spine is touching one of the nerves. And as a result, you get this referred pain down one of your legs. Okay, so the first step is controlling pain. Let's say you're in the garden doing some gardening and you lift a heavy bag of soil or you're in the gym and you're doing a deadlift and your technique maybe is a little bit subpar, a little bit suboptimal. And as you're lifting that weight, as you're lifting that bag of soil, you feel your back pop, you feel it go. So the first thing you wanna do is stop doing that activity that's aggravated the back. If you hurt your back deadlifting, then you're not gonna just carry on deadlifting, are you gonna stop? You're gonna be like, oh, I've gotta leave it alone now, I've gotta rest, I've gotta stop doing that thing that's caused it pain. If the pain really is severe, then of course rest, lie down, take your anti-inflammatories, N-S-A-I-D-S, ibuprofen or paracetamol. If you're not sure about pain medication, go and check with your GP or your family doctor. But if you can pinpoint the area where you're getting pain, then of course you can put an ice back on it. The second step when pain has settled is to start gently moving because what you don't wanna do is just lie in bed and stiffen up and not only will you stiffen up, but the muscles around your body will just get weaker because you're not moving around because you're not, you're not using them. So here are some exercises that you can do. The first one is a cat cow. Begin on your hands and knees in a crawling position with a neutral spine. As you inhale and move into the cow pose, press your chest forward and allow your belly to sink. Lift your head and relax your shoulders away from your ears, gazing straight ahead. As you exhale, come into the cat pose while rounding your spine tucking in your tailbone. Release your head towards the floor as you relax and repeat for the desired number of repetitions. The next one you can do is the side to side bends like a penguin. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart, have your hands by your sides, bend sideways towards one side. Do not push through the pain, hold for two seconds and then slowly return to the start position. Repeat this for the other side and do this for the desired number of repetitions. The next exercise is a pelvic tilt where you lie on your back. You can lie on the bed or on a yoga mat and what you want to do is imagine that there's an egg underneath your back and you're trying to gently squeeze it. So you take a breath in and you gently squish the egg and maintain that pressure for two seconds and then release. You might also then choose to ease yourself back into some normal daily tasks such as driving, cooking, maybe a little bit of cleaning. And 72 hours after the initial trauma, if it was indeed trauma that caused your low back pain, you can start putting heat on it. So like a wheat bag or a heat bag that you pop in the microwave or hot water bottle, this is going to start loosening up those muscles that have become really tense. So I don't know whether you guys have experienced whiplash before, but you're in a car crash or a car accident, you know, your head jolts back and forth. And immediately after that, you feel okay, right? Your, your neck feels almost a little bit loose, but you're not getting any significant pain, it's mostly just shock. The day after, when you wake up, you get out of bed and your neck is so stiff you can't even move and someone someone calls your name and you can't turn your head so you have to move your whole body. Now that's not ideal and the reason for that is because those muscles around the neck 
stiffen up. They're trying to protect that neck where you probably have a little bit of ligament damage or a little bit of soft tissue structure damage. And that's why everything tightens up. The same principle happens in the case of low back pain, everything tightens up to protect whatever structures that the back thinks or the body thinks is damaged. Step number three is maybe a couple of days to a week after the initial back pain, the initial trauma, you wanna start strengthening your trunk musculature. It's impossible to identify exactly which structure is causing the pain or which structure has been damaged. So what guidelines recommend is that you actually strengthen your trunk as a whole. And by getting all those muscles to work together synergistically, you can actually reduce low back pain. And that's what a lot of studies have found. Um, I can link a couple in the description below. Things you can do are bird dogs. Begin on all fours with your knees under your hips and your arms under your shoulders. Fix your gaze on the ground, which will help you to keep a neutral spine. Lift your opposite hand simultaneously with the opposite leg. Try to form a straight line from the extended hand to the extended foot. Hold for two seconds before lowering your limbs down in a controlled way. You may either then repeat this on the same side, or you may do alternate sides. Repeat for the desired number of repetitions. You can also do a side plank. Lie on your side with your elbow on the floor directly under your shoulder. Your knees should be on the ground with your legs straight. Lift your hips off the floor and raise the other arms so that it is pointing up towards the ceiling. Make sure that your body is in one straight line. Hold for 10 to 20 seconds and then repeat on the other side. And of course you can add a plank in as well. Plank is a really good core exercise but it really gets you to engage your glutes, your abdominal muscles and your thigh muscles. Basically your entire body, your entire core gets engaged and it's gonna help strengthen things up, strengthen up those trunk muscles. And these exercises you don't have to do every day. You can do every two days or so. And it's really important that we get the glutes firing because the glutes work synergistically with the muscles in the lower back and it's part of your core so you need to make sure those are strong. You might also choose to start returning to the gym but when you go back to the gym you don't want to pile on the weight that you were doing beforehand you want to actually start a lot lighter and build yourself back up and make sure that you're listening to your body and not pushing through pain. There are actually a few good exercises you can implement into your strength routine. So the first one is that you can do some hyper extensions on the floor. Begin lying face down on the ground with your arms overhead and straight. Lift your head, arms and legs up off the ground simultaneously while keeping both the arms and legs completely straight. Keep your gaze down at the ground to maintain a neutral spine in the neck. Then lower everything back down at the same time. Repeat for the desired number of repetitions. Repeat this for 10 to 12 repetitions and you can do this for three sets. Again, not every day. You might choose to do it two, three times a week with whatever exercise program you're doing. If you guys are interested, then I've actually made an ebook with a video tutorial and that goes into more detail about low back pain. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, if you follow these tips, then you're probably well on your way to resolving your low back pain. Remember that these things take time. It doesn't go away just like that. But if you manage the load, you modify your activity and slowly build yourself into your original routine with some strengthening exercises that I've given you, then you'll be grand, you'll be fine. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found.